So cauliflower crust margarita pizza. Cauliflower has been elevated to a new level in recent years because chefs started using it in new ways. So instead of rice, cauliflower rice, which is done exactly like we're doing today. It's just finely chopped cauliflower in your food processor. And in this case, we're making a crust, no flour, but lots of flavor. And I love it. It's a break from the traditional crust. It's delicious and it is very good for you because it's a vegetable. It's low in calories and carbs. It's full of fiber, B vitamins, and antioxidants. Now I've already prepared this rice. Um, this is a whole head of cauliflower and I cut the florets up kind of small because it, it just works better. I put them in batches in my food processor fitted with a metal blade and then I process them pulsing and that helps because it makes the cauliflower drop back down and connect with the blade and they look like this. Um, I put this all in a bowl, covered it with saran and microwaved it for five minutes. Um, they still have some texture but they're mostly cooked. And you, need to, you don't need to add any water into the mix. There's plenty of water actually in the cauliflower and you'll see that in a second here. So this is what this looks like, almost like mashed potatoes. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Okay. And what I'm gonna do, because this has quite a bit of water in it, is I'm gonna press this out. Now I usually do this when it's really hot, but I did let it cool down because I just wanted to make sure I could handle it. And this thing I have here, it's actually what I use for cheese making. One of them, I have a lot of these. Um, they, they call them silk chinoise. And they're basically in lieu of using cheesecloth, but you can certainly use cheesecloth or uh, uh, dish towel if you wanted to. Um, okay, so you can see how Finally, that is, and I can mash it together. And that's really what you're looking for is that mashability. But first, before I do anything else, I've got to get some of that water out of there. So this takes a few paper towels and I'm just going to mash it. And I can hear that coming out. And I can see it too. And this is important because you, we're not adding any flour into this at all. We're adding just eggs and a little cheese and some seasoning. So you don't want this water coming out in your crust. So I like to do this, go through, and you're gonna lose a little bit because it's gonna to stick to your paper towels. That's just kind of the nature of it. And then I'm gonna do it again. I'm pressing pretty hard. It's just like when you're doing spinach or anything like that, you really have to get that moisture out so it doesn't affect your final product with it kind of weeping, which can happen if you don't do this. So I can still hear it there. I'm going to go one more round so you can see I'm determined. Okay, let's flip that over. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. I think that looks pretty great. Okay, now what I'm gonna do quickly is just crack a couple of eggs in this bowl. Two eggs. Oops. And beat them. And it's important to remember when you're doing something like this, you really do need to, to really beat these eggs and get them well combined so that when you're integrating this whole thing, it all mixes together nice and evenly. Oftentimes what I do, I'm not doing it right now, but if I'm doing omelets or that type of thing, I use an immersion blender to blend my eggs and I never have to worry about it. But take a little time with it because you want this to incorporate. Okay, I will call that good. So let's just go ahead and get the cauliflower in there. This is kind of big. <laughs> It's 
a lot of fabric, but I'm working with it. Okay, there we go. And I didn't lose very much of the cauliflower in there. There's a little bit sticking, but not bad. So let's get that out of the way. Okay, and then to that, I'm going to add a half a cup of grated Asiago cheese. Of course, you can use Parmesan. You could use a Romano, a Pecorino, whatever suits your fancy. And let's start mixing that up. It really does look like mashed potatoes. And now at this point, it, because this is cooked, I don't really smell the cauliflower. It has, you know, how cauliflower when it's cooking has initially has that real cabbagey kind of smell to it. That seems to be mostly gone. Okay, that's looking good. And then to that, I'm going to add a tablespoon of dried basil. We'll sprinkle that in just to help get it moved around so I can get it evenly distributed. So I'm going to taste this in a minute. Now, I have no problem with tasting um, because I'm not eating raw eggs. I have no problem with tasting something that has a little bit of raw egg in it. If you don't like doing that, then I would do the seasoning and then add the egg in afterwards. But I make mayo with raw eggs and I'm pretty used to it, so I've never had, never had an issue. Okay, let's give this a little taste. Yep, it's good. There's no salt in it yet. But I'm going to go kind of light. I would say that's probably a half a teaspoon. Let's put some pepper in there too. The reason I'm going to go kind of light is because there's cheese, of course, on top of the pizza, and that's going to have salt in it. So I don't really want this to be over salted. But I will taste it again. You know how I like my spoons. The nice thing about this with the basil is you can really tell if everything is being incorporated evenly because you can see it. And the basil seems like a lot of basil, but once you look at this, it's really not. Okay, that looks great. Okay, let me get my pan here. So I have a sheet pan and a piece of parchment on top of the sheet pan. And I'm going to just take some cooking spray and spray the parchment. And this is just to help the pizza crust release when you're actually cutting it. And I like doing it on parchment because I can just leave it on the parchment, slide it right off onto a platter, and that's it. Nice and easy. Okay, get rid of that. Okay, so then we just want to basically plop this right in the middle. Now, you're going to have some variations here because, of course, all cauliflower heads are not um, created equal. So you might have a larger one or a smaller one. That's going to affect a couple of things, the size of your pizza mainly, uh, probably the amount of salt and pepper you put in. But I've tried this recipe with a number of, you know, different kinds of different cauliflowers and they're all in slightly different sizes and the eggs and the amount of basil hold up so you don't have to really worry about adjusting that just your salt and pepper and just know that when you're spreading this around and you're making your pizza and that's what this is um, that you might get a larger one or a slightly smaller one you're going for about a half an inch thick and you're just going to try and smush it. That's a culinary term, smush, smush. Mm -hmm. That's a good term. But that's what this is. I'm smushing this into a rectangle. And like I said, this is a pretty big cauliflower, so this is going to be. And about a half inch thick works out really well. And you can just kind of pull it back 
to make the edges nice, although I don't mind if they're a little bit craggy. I think that looks kind of nice, actually. You can see if we didn't do that, that straining and we would have had all that water as I was doing this, the water would be coming out all over the place. So that's the reason that you have to take that time and do that. This is pretty fun. It's like working with Play-Doh. <laughs> Gene asked if when you're squeezing the water out, could you just tighten the mesh and kind of squeeze it in the bag? You know what? I, that doesn't work. Um, I mean, I suppose if you really put a lot, of, it, it's sort of like it, you need to push it through. So, um, but that's a great question because I kind of started with that thinking that I could just do this and it would come out, but it just doesn't do anything. So that's the reason for the, the actual great question though, because I was, I was surprised at that. I mean, certainly if it's other things, you would be able to do that. I mean, if you're squeezing water out of ricotta or something like that, you can get it to go through, but this is like it just resisted it, so that's why I wound up doing the pressing. There, how does that look? I'm gonna ask you to set a timer here. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna put it in for um, the one I just did took about 15 minutes. I say 12 to 15 in the recipe, but what you're really looking for, and this will vary from oven to oven, is you want it to start browning on the edges. You're going to cook it again once you put your toppings on, so you can kind of gauge from there um, that, you know, that it's going to go back in the oven. So, but at least 12 minutes and until you see those edges starting to brown. So I'll put this in. You want to set the timer for 15? Okay. All right, and that's what we have now. So you can see it's kind of a golden brown, but it really did change in color. It's not as light as the other one was. And set that right there. And I can see the edges are starting to brown a little bit. And that's just perfect, just what I want. Okay, now the topping. So we're gonna start with some aged mozzarella. You know, your shredded pizza cheese, basically. And this, this would, is this a recipe you could easily just cut in half too if you wanted a smaller pizza? Yeah, you just have to use half a head of cauliflower. So yeah, that would be totally fine to do. And you know the seasonings and all of that would have to be have to be done. I you know for one thing wrote it just because this is a kind of a normal size for a pizza, but also. Um, I always try to write recipes, or at least most of the time I do, that use an entire vegetable so that you're not like, okay, now I've got a half of this sitting around. Okay, so that's gonna be your base right there. And then I've got some fresh mozzarella here. So this is about a pound, and we're not gonna use that much. Um, I do need a knife here. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this, this came pre-sliced, and I notice more and more that you can only get pre-sliced mozzarella. Um, what I like to do with it is actually, because I, I find that to be too heavy, especially on this pizza that's got an, already a vegetable crust, and it's a little more on the delicate side, so I like to cut it in half like that. And you just distribute it any old way you want to. I'm excited for this because this is our dinner and I am looking forward to it. Okay. Yeah, this just works out a lot better than just having this huge amount of cheese, which of course it's fresh mozzarella, so it's gonna be, have that kind of um, stringy gooeyness to it anyway, just because of what it is. So I never actually use these slices, except for maybe in a caprese, but usually I'm always cutting these up because I want them to be finer. Okay, one more. Okay, perfect. 
Okay, then we've got some tomatoes, the typical margarita combination. Colors of the Italian flag. Okay, then these guys, you know what, I'm gonna just use that for the ends. I just cut the ends off like that. And I want these pretty thin too. Now these tomatoes, um, are Campari tomatoes. I get these at Costco. This is one of the kinds of tomatoes I buy in the winter, particularly when I can't grow my own. And so these are a little smaller, so I'll be using more. So you just kind of distribute these guys around. But I like buying these because I can usually get them slightly under ripe and then I just keep them for about a week just in their container on my countertop and they ripen up nicely. And even though, you know, I've never found a tomato in winter in Minnesota that tastes like what we get in July and August, but this does pretty well. Now I'm using a serrated knife for this. this is my go-to choice for any time I slice tomatoes. I always use a serrated knife never have trouble getting through the skin. And we learned in the knife seminar that you can sharpen a ser well, at least ever sharp can sharpen a serrated knife, which I thought, I had always been told that you couldn't do that. So if you didn't know that, you heard it here, they can be sharpened. You just have to go to someone that has the right equipment and knowledge. Let's get that. I was on these ends. I don't like the, all that skin, so I always take the little bit off like that, so I've got a nice piece of open inside of the tomato. Let's do one more. Then we're gonna do some Malden sea salt. So a nice crunchy sea salt on top. Are you doing cherry tomatoes? Oh, I didn't do those yet, did I? Oh, I'll do them now. Thank you. Just leave them over here. I forgot my cherry tomatoes, so let's get those in there. And I just decided to do the cherry tomatoes just because I wanted to kind of mix up the size a little bit and I think they're really pretty. You can place them any way you want to if you want the cut side up or I like to do a kind of variety of them up and down. Now I'm not gonna put the basil on before I bake it. I know sometimes people do that. Um, but in this case, I decided not to do that. And that was eight, eight cherry tomatoes, by the way, in case I didn't say that. Um, but I like to have the basil be really fresh. So I put it on right before I serve it. Okay, so I already did some salt and that's fine. So let's do a little pepper. All right, I'm gonna put this in the oven and this will go for probably another 12 to 15 minutes and um, we'll check it. I'm not sure if we're gonna be on that long, but I'll put this in and Mark, can you set a timer for, why don't you set a timer for 10 and I'll check it then. I can only set one timer at a time. Oh, you, have, you know what? I'm gonna take this crust out anyway. So that's all right. Can you reset it? Hmm? Uh -huh. um, for 10 minutes. So you can see this is the crust baking along here. It starts to almost puff up a little bit. It's not done, but we need the oven for the other pizza. But it's starting to take on that more yellow color and it's got some places where it's almost puffing. Um, and I would say another five minutes or so and this would be set to go, but we're gonna leave that out for now. 
Okay, so while that is in the oven, do I have any questions? Can you do this uh, recipe with broccoli? Can you do this recipe with broccoli? Yeah, I would think so. The only thing, um, you know, the texture of broccoli when it's chopped up, it, it gets, because of the structure of those little florets, it's different than, than cauliflower. Cauliflower really um, doesn't get that kind of dusty, too fine quality, whereas um, broccoli has like little, little pieces, like little leaves almost. You know what I'm talking about? In the, mm -hmm. So it's different. So I would say it would probably work, but I probably wouldn't do it. Um, <laughs> you know, just, because, just because I think I, I wouldn't like the texture as much as I like this. So I, um, yeah, but worth a try, definitely. Maybe a mix of the two, get a little variation in flavor and color. Could you, um, can you bake the crust and then assemble it later? Yes, you can definitely make this ahead. I, I would say the only thing about this in terms of um, making it ahead, I mean, I, I would say you can make it up to a day ahead even uh, if you wanted to. I have never frozen it, so that I don't know. Once the, once the crust is assembled, I'm not sure if it freezes real well. I would think it would, but um, because certainly you can freeze cauliflower, but this is cooked, so maybe not. But but for sure, you can definitely make it ahead and finish it off at the last minute. Um, instead of doing the cooking spray on the parchment, could you use just a sill pad? Yes, you can definitely use a sill pad. Um, the only reason I don't use a sill pad is generally because I like to serve it, you know, just like pull it off and serve it. And it's a pretty big pizza, so if it, you, know, you have any problems with lifting it, in one piece, it's it's just a little harder to do. So you'd have to take the silk pat off and slide it onto a plate. So, and it's a little more delicate than a pizza. It's not, you know, it's not something, I mean, you kind of have to eat it with a, a fork and a knife and not pick it up like you would a piece of pizza. So, um, so that's the reason I went with the parchment and I love serving things on parchment just because I think it looks really pretty and it always, you know, once it's really cooked, you'll get the, browning around the edges, which I also think is really pretty. Um, so that's, yeah, but you certainly could, if that's what your preference is, you can certainly use a sill pad. Um, I know it's a little bit of a pain to oil parchment paper, but it does really work, so. Any can, other questions? Can this be uh, um, reheated okay too? Yes, it definitely reheats okay, as I say generally with almost everything that comes out of an oven. Um, I like to reheat it in the oven. So I would say probably 400 degrees for five minutes and it would be good to go. Um, you know, you can do that in foil or in a pan, however you want to do it. And if you want it to brown a little bit more, don't cover it. Um, but I'm sure it will microwave. You know, when I had my meal delivery service, I would always be telling people, you know, please reheat the food in your oven. And we even like printed it on the bags and that type of thing. And I know they never did. So <laughs> I know they all microwaved everything and they never were concer <laughs> concerned about it. But I would say reheat in the oven. Any other questions? Um, can the cauliflower rice be frozen? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, actually, um, cauliflower freezes really well. So yeah, you could do the, if you want, if you were gonna half the recipe, then you, you split, you know, prepared your rice or your cauliflower for the um, crust, split it in half, freeze half of it for the next time you wanna make it, and then use that, that's fine. All you have to do with that is um, just get any air out of the Ziploc bag and fold it up you know, oh, so it's nice and tight and seal it and that's it. And probably I would say not more than two months in the freezer. So just kind of keep an eye on that. Be good for the food saver then. Food saver, yes. We're big food saver fans. Yes, it would be good with that. Although, you know what? Maybe it wouldn't be. I take that back because some vegetables emit gases and so they tend to like, um, break the seal of food savers because they're emitting gas. So I'd have to, I'd have to try that. But, um, 
I know for sure you shouldn't do that and put it in your fridge and not, not freeze it because that, that could cause a problem. It's not going to hurt, hurt you, but some vegetables just are not, not a good idea in, in um, vacuum patch, packaging. Can't. Yep. Yep, we certainly have had our food saver days, haven't we? Yeah. So is that it for questions? That's all we have now. Okay, I'm going to pull this out just so you can see what it looks like. Okay. So the one thing I was going to mention, this is good, is that the fresh mozzarella will start to weep a little bit, which it's doing now. As it bakes, that kind of evaporates off. So, and this would happen on any kind of pizza that you did this on. But if it doesn't all go away, um, then you can just blot it off with a paper towel before you serve it. Um, should I pretend that this is okay, this is done, and put the basil on? Sure. Okay. So this pizza's done. <laughs> And all I'm talking about is just very simply doing this kind of a thing. Like that. But like I said, and some of that is just the cheese melting and some of it's a little bit of liquid. But just keep that in mind. And then all I do is, I'm not going to drizzle it with olive oil, but ordinarily if I was serving it, I would drizzle it with olive oil, which is really beautiful. It's always nice to do that in front of your guests because it's really pretty. And then I like taking the smaller leaves and leaving them whole of basil. And you can see how just beautiful and bright green that is. And it's fine. I'm going to put this back in the oven and it's fine for sure that, you know, that the basil will just cook like it ordinarily would, but I kind of like it fresh and not cooked. Right. Considering the cauliflower, is there any toppings that you stay away from? Is it like maybe another vegetable or something? Um, well, I thought of this. You know, it, it's. I thought of this mainly because of what, you know, the basil in the in the crust that I put in there. Um, you know, I I don't really see this as a sausage pizza kind of thing. I mean, I kind of like it with the fresh. The fresh things but you could go more traditional and do maybe um, a regular sauce and do some peppers and you know I mean you can do any kind of pizza combination that you want but this is the one I came up with just based on what the crust wound up tasting like you could even saute some eggplant I mean when we do pizzas you know, we have our little family pizza parties. I mean, I don't know how many ingredients we have, like 20, just all kinds of things. So you can play around that. That would be a nice alternative to a nice gluten-free alternative to um, regular pizza crust. Um, if you did a pizza party with all the different toppings and then you'd have this all taken care of um, for your gluten-free people. Okay, I am gonna pop this back in the oven. And any more questions now that you can in front of me that's it for now. that is it for now okay I think we are wrapping I am gonna go and hop over to zoom I hope you'll join me um, and um, thanks for making pizza with me I will see you in a few minutes thanks everybody bye bye